There are a load of obvious reasons why RuneScape in 2004 was magical. You're young, impressionable, and it felt like every single piece of content you did was fun and exciting. And sure, the game definitely wasn't without its flaws, as the items and gear were poorly balanced and skills were incredibly slow to train. But to that I say, so what? The game wasn't built around efficiency, it was built around the idea of creating a world that you can explore and get lost in. Andrew Gower himself, the creator of RuneScape, has even stated that he never expected people to actually get 99s in a skill. What do Rune Armor and Split Bark have in common? They both used to be the best in slot items for melee and magic respectively, and you only needed 40 defense to wear both of them. And this is going to lead me into making a very bold statement. There was just as much content to do in 2004 as there is to do in 2022. Now bear with me for just a second and look past the clunky game frame and the lack of quality of life updates that were around back then. For almost every single update that comes out, somewhere in RuneScape a piece of content dies, and that content gets long forgotten. New updates don't just get added, they replace old content as well. Now Jagex does do a solid effort at reviving old content, we don't have to look far to see polished up old content like the Fishing Trawler loot upgrade, the King Black Dragon drop table buff, and the Shades of Morton rework just to name a few. But even reworks like that kill 2004 methods as well. Pair that with new content and there is no reason to cut use because killing the giant mole nets more use per hour and there is no reason to fish sharks because brimstone chests will give you more than you'll ever need. Games need to update and I'm glad RuneScape has. But I think it's time we take a look at the very long forgotten methods and show some appreciation to a time where we didn't take things too seriously and we played not to be efficient but because we got immersed in the adventure. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. What if I told you that fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering recipes were able to be delivered right to your front door? That is exactly what HelloFresh is, America's number one meal kit, and let me tell you, it makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. I don't like going to grocery stores, and this relieves so much stress of meal planning and saves me so much time. I love just getting everything to prepare an amazing and delicious meal right to my front door. HelloFresh recipes feature produce sourced directly from U.S. farmers and picked at peak ripeness. In under a week, that produce shows up directly to your door, which means the spring menu is filled with the freshest of flavors. There are so many recipes to choose from with over 50 weekly options, including a rotating selection of items at the HelloFresh market. There is really a dish for every single occasion. So mix up mealtime by learning a new skill, whether that be solo, with a partner, or with the whole family. The step-by-step -step recipes are so easy to make, you can even get the kids involved. So I know some of you are definitely going to be interested, so use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code pogrargjune 16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts across 6 HelloFresh boxes, plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. First up, we're going to take a look at the prayer training methods of 2004. The fundamentals are the exact same. You get bones, you bury them, and you get prayer XP. However, that is where the similarities between then and now end. Back in 2004, there was exactly zero ways to get extra XP for your bones. The Ectophuntus didn't exist. Player-owned houses did not exist. And the Wildy Altar, Technically that did exist, but you sure as heck couldn't put any bones on the altar to get extra XP for your money. And to really immerse ourselves, every single method that we're going to do in today's video, we're going to find on a guide from Rune HQ that was actually written in 2004. And it looks like first up, we have the Boneyard. We got to head north of Varrock level 26 and 27 Wilderness. We're actually going to be picking up and just burying bones. Sets to bring three items or four if you have over 25 prayer. See, that's how you get smited in today's world, but okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. And some food, 10 to 15 lobbies should be more than enough. Of course, we're gonna pick up some bones. We want some free inventory spaces and just bury the big bones. There's big bones there, which respawn real fast. So we made it to the bone zone and they were not kidding, guys. Those big bones do in fact spawn pretty quick. We got our four best items to tank any PKers that come our way. Our 15 lobsters, look at that. Oh, that's so quick. That spawns so quick. I think this actually might be pretty good XP. I'll probably pick up the four and then maybe like two or three small bones along the way. And then by the time I walk back, there it is. There's the new bone on the ground. They weren't kidding. 
You know, this gets me a little heated, actually. As a kid, I used to kill hill giants like crazy to pick up their bones and sell them. And you're telling me I just had to walk to the Wildy and pick them up this quick? So remember when they said this was really fast prayer training XP? Looks like we're getting around 7.2k XP an hour here. Great for the low levels, but as a high level player, might be struggling just a little bit. What to kill? Now that you know a little bit about the bones, here are some guidelines that may help you decide how to level your prayer. First off, I love how it shows prayer level. It doesn't matter what level you are when you bury a bone. It wasn't any different back in 2004. You could bury a dragon bone with one prayer. Now you can do the same back then. But what I love most about this little chart is that it says for ogres, I should be 75 plus to get big bones. And for dragons, I only need to be 80 plus combat. Now, I know the guide doesn't specifically mention killing dragons, but it does mention dragons. It does mention that if you have 40 plus prayer and 80 plus combat, that dragons are an option. And of course, green dragons are the weakest one. So we're going to do some green dragon killing and see just how much XP per hour that we get. Let's see how it compares to the boneyard. Oh my God, they're noted. That's right. I, I can't turn that off. That's impossible to turn off uh it's fine we're gonna pick them up as like a placeholder to see how many we get technically they shouldn't take up any inventory space because i should be burying them as we go we can still counter kills the immersion is just broken the immersion is broken also keep in mind that i do have max combat and max gear for the time period so this is like as fast as it could possibly get dude i'm here thinking trying to figure out how much dragon bones are it's right in the article 3,000 GP each. Even big bones are 500 GP each. Do you know how much money that was back in 2004? And on top of that, of course, there's no way to boost how much XP you get per bone. So back in 04, you had to take off your glory to teleport. So this would be inventory spot. I'm going to pretend I took this off tellied and that was of course supposed to be an empty slot so if we were going to go for maximum prayer xp killing green dragons we'd of course have to sell the green dragon hide if we sold them for 1.7k each plus the 1.5k we had in our inventory we have 44k if we buy bones with the 44k add them to the 25 bones that we originally got times that all by 72 xp per bone we only come out to 11.2k XP per hour. And that's technically not even true because I'd have to spend time selling the hides and buying bones. Again, it's a rough estimate, but if I started spamming selling green dragon hide above my head, I think people would think I'm insane. And we have the final test. The ultimate Chad way of burying bones in 2004 is spending 41.6 GP per XP and burying bones that are 3k each. If I were to do this from level 1 to 99, it would cost me 541 mil, and that is in 04 dollars. So we're looking at a steady 203 to 205k. I'm gonna stop doing this because my finger is absolutely killing me, and I am wasting a ton of money doing this. Next, we're gonna take a look at a runecrafting guide. Now, if you guys think runecrafting is slow today, you are mistaken, this is slow. We're talking no tiaras, no pouches, no abyss. This is as primitive as it can get. The runecrafting guide is even not really a guide. It's just more of like guidelines on what the skill is. Right here, it basically says do the quest. And there's a little quest guide right here to get started. Pure Essence didn't even exist yet. So you had to just mine Rune Essence. That was used for every type of rune that you can actually make. It lists the tiaras. And if you scroll down, it basically just tells you where the altars are. Okay, so for you guys, a second pass. I had to look really hard for this, but we found a rune crafting guide for nature runes under this article, Speed Skills, November 1st, 2004. And we got nature runes using the general store trick. So it looks like we're going to bring some money, some noted essence, about 10k. And of course, instead of banking, we're going to use the general store northwest of the altar in Karamja. Waste a small amount of money, but saves a massive amount of time. All right, we have our nature talisman. We have our essence. Unfortunately, it has to be pure essence. You can't actually make higher tier runes with rune essence anymore after an update that was brought out in 2006. I'm updating the guide a little bit, and I'm going to bring super energy potions because I do want to see what the max speed doing Nats would be in 2004 as well as see how much money we could actually net 
this was actually going down. So we have our 20k. We have the essence. So the method's going to be really simple. We're just going to sell 20. I'll probably do 25 just to make it quick. And then, ooh, technically buy 50 wasn't there. We'll let that one slip happen. So not only is this farther from the bank for other room crafting methods in today's world, but you can only get 23 in inventory, assuming you're doing this method. Obviously, my inventory is kind of full right now, but I think the super energies are definitely worth it in the long run. 23, of course, that would be doubled if it was 91. This is going to be really, really slow XP, but we have to put ourselves in the mindset of this is 2004. People aren't skilling to necessarily grind the hell out of skills to the point where they're going to max out and burn themselves out. It was more geared to, yeah, let me get 40 room crafting so I can make gnats and maybe make some money or alk a few things rather than I'm going to sit here and grind for seven hours. There's actually an interview with Andrew Gower, and he says that if he can go back in time, he would try to balance things a little better. Better. Like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, best in slot gear used to be level 40 combat or 40 defense, I should say. So that's probably why the smithing skill, you need 99 smithing to make the best in slot gear, a room plate body, room plate legs, room kite shield, I believe are all 99 smithing. That really makes sense. He probably had the idea no one's going to get that or a very few select amount of people are going to be able to mine and smith the best in slot gear. All right, we're coming up very close to that 30 minute mark. We're about 20 seconds off, so there's no way we get another trip. Man, I wanted to get over 500 gnats. We're not even gonna get over 400. 7.3K XP per hour. Let's run some calculations and see just how awesome this was back then. I'm gonna show some actual prices from 2004. The one thing I could not find for the life of me is the price of super energy potions back then. So keep in mind that these figures are without the super energy. I didn't want to leave them out, of course, but I don't wanna just make up a price because I genuinely have no idea. So keep that in mind, be minus whatever the cost of 19 super energy pots were. We spent 55K in supplies, all things considered. So that means if we were doing single gnats, it'd be 182K GP per hour. And if we were doing double gnats, it'd be 420K GP per hour. I know, great number, 420 blaze it. Next, we're gonna take a look at the RuneScape Thieving Guide from December 17th, 2004. Now this thing is incredible. Aside from the obvious of pickpocketing and stealing from stalls, a lot of the stuff is the exact same but it's a lot more dumbed down. You don't have things like the Artie Diary and you don't have things like Gloves of Silence to help you actually pickpocket at a faster rate. But what I wanna focus on real quick is this strategy portion of the guide. The best bet on pickpocketing an enemy is to pace yourself and to not pick an enemy quickly, but in a peaceful way. This will help you and you'll get caught even less. Pressing pickpocket on a character twice in quick succession will almost always result in getting caught. I definitely believe that as a kid, 100%. As you gain levels, of course, you'll be able to do it faster. Oh, and this, this sent me, guys. Also, if you thief from behind, they are not looking at you, and so you may have a better chance of success. I have seen it all at this point. That was such an 04 mindset. It's written in a guide. I could probably do a full video on literally just looking at this guide. The type of thieves, the bad thief, the good thief. The first sentence in the bad thief is nothing is more annoying than a thief thieving the character you're stealing from. It, it's it's amazing. I urge you all to take a look at any guides written back then using Wayback Machine. That's how I'm getting all this stuff. And you, you will have a great time, especially if you are really nostalgic like myself. For today, we're going to be focusing on the profit section of the guide. Thieving is by far the best overall profit making skill. You love to hear it unless you're 99 smithing reference to what I was saying before. So the first thing, the best method apparently in order to make money through one of the best skills in 2004 is the Chaos Druid Tower, AKA Blood Runes. So the plan is simple. We just get a lock pick. We enter the cavern, walk past the ogres, check for traps and we get 500 coins and two Blood Runes, at which point it'll be warped to a nearby building. First step, we gotta pick lock this door. We all know this uh, Chaos Druid Tower. I've been here in many PVP challenges. It's still a pretty good hotspot for bots like Samuel right here. Um, so we just walk down here. No one really comes down here. I mean, I'm sure maybe some Iron Man here or there might do this, but it's these chests right here. Come down here, search the traps, or search for traps. Did I fail? Two blood runes, 500 coins, and we get sent to this building. That's actually not too far away at all. This is going to be pretty quick. This is going to be pretty quick. And blood runes, I imagine, we're not going to check just yet. 
but I imagine they were quite expensive back in 04. I think I've locked down a pretty good strategy. It's going to sound complicated, but I swear it's not. There's two chests in each world, and each chest has a 135 second respawn rate. In 2004, if you hopped between worlds, it took 30 seconds. You could not just quick hop, and it was a bit of a pain in the ass, admittedly. But when I walk back, I am actually able to walk back and then wait a little extra time there, loot the chest before that 30 second hop would normally be up. And the reason why I'm also not logging off and waiting 30 seconds is because I can get some run regen back while I'm actually walking to the chests and waiting for the chests. So what I do is I get 100 run, use the run, hop on those trips but then when i'm walking i don't actually hop and i just wait so we're coming up on that 30 minute mark i will not be able to get another one after this because i'll have to of course walk back and then wait the 30 seconds to hop so this is going to be the last chest in the 30 minute test 64 blood runes and 16k so unfortunately there's no real solid indication of how much blood runes sold for in 2004 it's a pretty hectic year a lot of updates happen that can influence prices in this guide, it does say you could sell each rune for 1k each. Now, I think that is true, but I think that's true for early, early 2004. It might even be from Classic. A lot of the RS2 data that you can read was pretty much copied and pasted from the Classic servers and then just edited here and there. And you could tell a lot of the stuff is kind of really outdated, even for 2004 standards. Sometimes you even see pictures of RuneScape Classic. And this guide currently, as I'm reading it, it's October. So it's like a half a year after RS2 was released. So I'm going to do two calculations. I'm going to do one calculation where I include it at 1k each and one calculation where I include it at 500 GP each. So at 500 GP per rune, you get 96k GP per hour. And at 1k per rune, you get 160k GP per hour. So the real metric is probably somewhere in there. That doesn't seem like a lot of money, but keep in mind, guys, to put this in perspective, picture yourself January 2005. So 04 just ended right around the corner. January 05, Mystic comes out. The best in slot magic gear for its time only sells for 235k at the Wizards Guild. That means less than two hours of thieving blood runes you can buy the best in slot magic gear. Imagine I told you that in two hours, you can get full ancestral starting from scratch. Next up, we're gonna take a look at paladin chests. So once you reach level 72 thieving, thief from the chests in the same tower as the paladins. And then you get teleported way over to East Arty, but you get 500 XP, an uncut sapphire, 1000 gold, an Adi ore, and an uncooked shark. Hey, the black simi. I think that's still the only way to get a black scimitar in this game. So this is the chest that we are talking about. Let's get all that juicy, juicy loot. Oh, am I going to fail? Could you fail? Dude, that is so much. Wow, that's such a long walk. That is such a long walk back. Oh, this door is such a pain in the ass, dude. I think this is going to slow it down quite a bit. But there is two chests in each world. It's just on the other side of the castle, so it's on the northern side, and um, that's the chest we were just at there. So similar principle, going to do the two chests and then walk all the way back and then hop. With this one, we're not going to do anything tricky when it comes to running and walking. We're just going to wait the 30 seconds if we have to hop. We're going to log out, though, so we don't regain any extra run. So the time is up. We managed to get 17 chests. Let's get all of our loot together. It looks like it was 18 and a half thousand XP per hour. Not much. Let's see if the money matches up though. So of course, everything will be double to get a rate for an hour. We're going to meet the prices in the middle on the price range here. So Shark, 750 each. Addy or 850 each. Sapphires, we couldn't actually find anything on. I'm going to lowball and say 300 each. I want to say they're probably a bit more than that, but we'll just say 300 just to underestimate a little bit. We add it all up. We only get 81.6k an hour. So funny enough, the blood runes, lower thieving level, more money per hour and more thieving XP per hour. We are going to wrap it up there. But before you guys go, I do want to make a little bit of a special announcement. Just real quick. If you are enjoying the video, please hit that subscribe button. Like the video. Let me know how nostalgic this made you feel because I definitely feel super nostalgic making it. What I want to say is that I'm not going to go too in detail because I want to keep it a little bit mysterious, but I have a really awesome 2004 project that I've been working behind the scenes for about a month now. And um, I cannot wait to tell you guys about it. I won't spoil what it is. You can leave your guesses in the comment section below. If you get it right, I won't tell you you're right, but somebody will probably get it right. But yeah, I just wanted to say that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys all in the next one.